27, 2020 is now called to order. Before we begin, I'd like to announce I will be adjourning this meeting tonight in memory of Rosemary Pierce, a longtime Montessorino resident and former city manager who passed away on December 29th. Please stand for the pledge. Of presentation, I would like to invite Forrest Williams, board member of the Santa Clara Valley Science and Engineering Fair Association, to speak about the STEM competition before we present the certificates of recognition to our 2019 winners from the city of Montserrat. Good evening, and thank you, and council members. We thank you for recognizing your own. Their STEM projects have done a great job. They compete at the local level, which is a Santa Clara level. They compete at the state level, and they compete at the international level. We are a premier science fair organization. We strive to invoke, or promote, and encourage youngsters to pursue STEM as a means of a career. We know that rules are put in place to govern. They're put in place to guide us and direct us for the benefit of humankind. This is an extension of what we do. We encourage technology, but we want them to know also that there's another part of life beyond technology, and that they must come to a government to understand how to best implement an idea that would be successful and useful and meaningful for humankind. Our motivation stems from many careers that are in the technology environment. I'm an engineer. I've worked where I've been for 35 years. Uh, city councilman for eight years. Planning commissioner for eight years. A school board member for 12 years. Working with the community to understand and survey those things that we need to for our children. There's nothing like the love of the child, to share that love with the child in the sense that they will be taking over from us. And if there's care that's expressed to them, then they will respond in kind. So this evening is a monumental evening for us, that you would take the time to recognize the students from your city for making that will make contributions to the future. So we are dedicated to this task, and we invite you to come to our science fair. We will send you a notice to that effect when it is time. So thank you very much for the opportunity, and I know you're looking forward to hearing from our students. So thank you. So, thank you. And I'll leave you. some cards for you. When is your science fair? It's in March uh, 2020. I mean, 2020 now. Every year around March, either we select the 11th or depending on the availability of the facility at the convention center in San Jose. But it will be in March, but we'll get a notice right back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kavita, would you like to come up and speak to us a little bit about your project? Thank you. This is Kavita Murphy, one of our winners. So first, I'd just like to thank everybody for acknowledging me here tonight. It really means a lot. I've lived in Montessorino my whole life, and it is a great community, and I'm really honored to be mentioned today. So my project is about in, in vegetables, you have like bacteria that are on the vegetables. And when I was thinking was, most of us don't cook our salads before we eat them. And there's a huge problem of bacteria becoming resistant to different antibodies, and they get infected to different antibiotics, since it continued use the bacteria become resistant. So my project was determining whether more heat-resistant bacteria are found on conventionally grown or organically grown spinach. So conventionally grown spinach would be any kind which are treated with bacteria, pesticides, anything like that. 
So yeah, I finished the project. I used um, things called primers, which are small sequences of DNA, which would detect how the prevalence of these genes of the bacteria in the two different samples. And my original hypothesis was that the conventionally grown spinach would have less of these bacteria since they have prior been treated with the bacteria side and the pesticide. And this hypothesis was correct at the end. And yeah, I think the great thing about science in general is that you get to, it's not an easy process. I used to go in thinking that you have an idea and you implement that idea and there might be a small couple of setbacks. But what I found was it's a lot more difficult than you might think. And even though you don't have a clear <coughs> plan, it doesn't often go as planned. Thank you, guys. Thank you, that's wonderful. Now I'm going to stay there and I'll present you with your. Yes. Oh, okay. Please stay there. So, Kavita, on behalf of the city of Montesquino, we would like to present you with the certificate of recognition and your fantastic endeavors. Thank and you. Congratulations. Serena, the great city that it has been ever since I moved in, 
And uh, that's my comment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lucas. Council recognizes Stan Weitzman. soft-spoken as my board members over here. <laughs> <laughs> so I have the privilege of being involved with Los Gatos and Montessorino, a resident of Montessorino for th almost 35 years, but working in Los Gatos as the President Emeritus of the Los Gatos Veterans Memorial and Support Foundation. I just came here to speak in favor of Steve Leonardis to tell you and all of us in Montessorino, I think we really have a gem here. I know he's dedicated to the city, and he was dedicated to the town. So we're, we're very happy to have him. He's been so generous uh, to our board. I think Diane alluded to the fact that we have the only space on, in, in downtown Los Gatos, on frontage on Main Street, and we don't pay rent. That's because Steve owns the building. So Steve, in, for, for the public to know, I just want to say thank you for that. And welcome to the city. Thank you. Council recognizes Nancy Pearson. Thank you for having me. Um, I just wanted to let you know that I, as a resident of Monte Serena, and I have been for going mm, almost two years now, um, I moved here from Willow Glen, prior to that Los Gatos, prior to that San Francisco. Sun Valley, Idaho, and I grew up in Saratoga. So I've been around in some other places too. The reason I say that is in all of those places, I never once knew the name of a city manager. But Steve Leonardis, we know your name, and more importantly, we know your reputation, and we're so happy that you are a city manager, and that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Council recognizes Diane Hanson. I'm very grateful for the uh, opportunity to address the council. This is my very first time here in this building. I've often flown by. It's really a fascinating inside and outside. Uh, I'm here this evening as a member, a committee member of the, the uh, Veterans Memorial and uh, Association and Board uh, for Silicon Valley. It's located in Los Gatos. I'm sure you've seen the new uh, memorial that is uh, uh, located now in Los Gatos. That we were, uh, we, I was uh, invited to uh, attend and speak at the memorial dedication, and that's how I got to know this fine group. Uh, and in the process of, of, of being part of the, of the Los Gatos Veterans Memorial, I, uh, I got to know Steve Leonardis, who I admire very much, and I'm here to tell you that I think he's a wonderful 
He has, he has been a delightful member of the past Los, Los Gatos, and, and now I'm sure that he's going to be a, doing a fine job for Mon Monte Sereno, and I'm very happy that he's here among us, and I appreciate your uh, listening to me, and thank you very much. Thank you very much. Council recognizes Brian Mekachuk. Hi, Brian Mekachuk, 17509 Via Sereno. Uh, I, as well as the others, want to welcome Steve to the City of Monte Sereno. I know that it's been a bit controversial, but uh, I think that's we're very fortunate to have Steve here. He knows the community, he knows the town of Los Gatos, City of Monte Sereno, so welcome, Steve. Thank you. And Council recognizes Stephen Gurawaya. Gurawaya, thank you. <laughs> 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 yeah, Steve, Steve is just fine. <laughs> yeah. Hi there, good evening, Mayor and hey, fellow Council uh, members. Um, Stephen Gurawaya here. Uh, I am the publisher of Los Gatos Living Magazine and Saratoga Spotlight Magazine. If you know the magazine, you'll know that there is a, a mayor's corner in each magazine, and each month there's a mayor's contribution. I leave the platform open to the mayor because they know better than I do as far as what is important to uh, the community, and it is really all about the community, uh, and what, um, how to help the community understand what's going on in the town or the city. Uh, Steve's been amazing in the information and content that he's provided every single month. I just want to start with that. Uh, outside of uh, my publishing job, I'm also a member of the Los Gatos uh, Kiwanis Club. And Steve's <clears throat> a member of the club, and he has been a huge member in participation and for the betterment of the community. I don't, don't should kind of reveal you or who you, what? He's a buddy. He's a man in a buddy suit that, <laughs> that makes a lot of very small children, families, and children very happy. I, I, I don't know if I should have said that or not, but anyway, <laughs> that that in itself is a huge, uh, huge, tremendous way to bring the community together and make a lot of people very happy. Um, outside of that, you know, his involvement in uh, patriotism in our community, which we need, we I strongly uh, support, and uh, we're a part of really bringing the community to understand that uh, we're we're in, in this together. And Steve has been I, I don't know if, how many people really know this, but uh, outside of this, Steve has independently taken on the responsibility or the the gift to our community to. Uh, to look out for flagpoles and re restore flagpoles and, and make the community happy, whether it's in a public area or a residential area. Um, I also serve on the board of the, um, the Veterans Foundation of Los Gatos. Um, I am not a veteran, and I, I, I strongly believe in our uh, men and women in, in the military. Um, if we all did just a little bit, and uh, help them in, in healing and also appreciation for their service to our country and preserving our liberties and our freedoms. Uh, I think that, um, that Steve does a huge job in supporting our efforts and, uh, and the community in that way as well. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. I think that's it for our oral communications. We have no written communications. So we'll move on to the consent calendar. Are there any council members who have questions on any items in the consent calendar? I have a question. I wonder, uh, uh, can we discuss those items, or maybe we just need to pull one of those? If you'd like to pull something, sure. Okay, we'll pull one of those and just try to chat about it. So uh, one of the items was the, the pageant lawsuit shows up, and I noticed that this is the second uh, time that it's shown up recently for $2,000. I'm, uh, I'm not questioning the amount, I'm just questioning whether we can get an accounting on the amount today. I know that a previous council uh, you know, essentially granted all of these services and so forth, but I, you know, I, it's just, it, this seems to be just a rolling figure that just keeps rolling by. Is there any way we can get an accounting to date of how much we've actually spent on this line item? Do you 
short answer, we don't have that information in front of us, but yes, that is something. We can come, come back with it yeah. at some other, at some future point in the class. Uh, Your first job. Steve. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. LeBeve, are you looking for an accounting since inception on the case? Yeah, yeah. So I'm just, it's, it's prior to, to me being involved, so I, I just don't even know what the magnitude of the number is. If it's rolling by, and I've seen this line item here several times as being on the council, and it's always a few thousand dollars here, a few thousand dollars there. I'm curious how much the city has spent on this so far. And Mr. Rubin, we have that since inception. Um, so we can look at that. I mean, all of the warrant lists are publicly available, so someone would have to go and compile that. May I ask the same question about the same item? Uh, the, the charges that we have, are they uh, for services rendered, the discovery, and not, not any, any type of settlement? Is that correct? These, are, these would be costs that were billed to the city for services rendered. Okay. And, and, and just to follow, follow up on that, thank you. Um, what are the projected charges going forward in this litigation? If you could get some idea on that, maybe a close session. I, I would prefer to answer those kind of questions in close session. Yeah. All right, then, do we have a motion to approve the consent calendar? No, I, I have one more item I want to pick up. All right. Second. Well, the cost sharing agreement uh, that is going to be negotiated, if, should that item also be in a closed session? Because it contains the authority we're giving our city manager and our friends and military for negotiating. I would think we would rather keep those amounts in the closed session. Which, which item are you discussing? The cost, uh, the recommendation of the, so I have two questions. This is the item number three, cost, cost sharing agreement with the town of Los Gatos. And this is a recommendation to outside the city manager and negotiate. Uh, so, so I have two questions, one is whether it should have been a closed session item, and the second is, uh, Whether you had a chance to look at the agreement and, uh, and recommend, as excuse, uh, recommend the form of that agreement with Los Gatos. So the only agreement that I've looked at is this cost sharing agreement. Now I wish that the city engineer was here to answer this particular question that you have as to whether or not uh, the agreement that is before you is an agreement um, to um, authorize the town to procure the project, enter into an agreement with the contractor, and then essentially split the costs for the cost sharing agreement right there. Um, so there's an agreement with the, between the town of Los Gatos and the city once, so yes. So, so the town is have you looked at that agreement and is that acceptable? I, I have looked at that agreement. That agreement is the one that is attached to your agenda packet. Right. So uh, and basically the the anticipated cost share would be approximately 50-50 with the town uh, being entitled to some overhead costs um, for engineering construction and other administrative services. I think uh, the city engineer would be able to speak more. Yeah, I, yeah, thank you, but I wasn't interested in the numbers. I was more interested in the legality of yeah. the agreement and the formatting and whether it protects the city from any potential exposure other than that. Yeah, I, I have looked at it. I have actually made uh, recommended changes, um, which were approved by the town uh, to address indemnification and insurance for the city. So I have to believe that it's appropriately protected. Okay. Thank you. All right, then. Do we have a motion to approve the consent calendar? So moved. Okay, so let me just clarify. So this would be to uh, approve the entire consent calendar. So I, I, have, I have a motion by Council Member Olahi, a second by Council Member, Tur excuse me, Turner. Oh, and actually, I, I recall what the exact issue was um, with respect to why the recommendation is phrased the way that it was. Originally, I had recommended to the city engineer that we request changes be made by the town. Those changes were ultimately accepted, but at the time of publication of the agenda, the town had not yet responded, which is why the recommendation was phrased the way that it was. So you all should be able to vote now. Okay, so all votes are in. The motion passes 5 0. Thank you. All right, moving on. Uh, 
We don't have any public hearings. There's no unfinished business. Moving on to new business. Item four, discussion and possible response to citizen complaint regarding Brown Act violations. Sergio, is the staff report? Um, uh, there's not exactly a staff report to this, but as you're all aware, uh, the city council and the city clerk by email uh, received a letter from an anonymous citizen alleging a uh, Brown Act violation on the basis of uh, the city council is, uh, you know, stymied for lack of a better word, uh, attempts by the public to, you know, come and present public criticism. Um, typically, um, the Brown Act, uh, in response to these types of complaints, uh, authorizes a process by which citizens can sue over Brown Act violations. They would normally have to provide a cease and desist letter that tells the council, you shall not, you know, we ask you to not commit these violations in the future. That's not exactly what this complaint is, so the council's not obligated to respond in any particular way. But if the council does want to respond, you know, my typical recommendation would be that you adopt. Um, the Brown Act provides what's called an unconditional commitment not to commit a violation of the same type in the future. So if you do that, you know, basically it puts out to the public that, you know, the, the council uh, recognizes that there's been a complaint, that the council's taken this action to make sure that violations don't happen moving forward, and, you know, it's sort of up to the council uh, because based on the content of the, the letter, it's not clear that there actually was a Brown Act violation. Um, but again, you know, if the council is inclined to do anything, um, adopting a uh, unconditional commitment is typically the safest course of action, which is why it's on the agenda today. Okay, thank you. I'd like to open this up to the council, and I'd like to start with council member Turner. Uh, thank you, Mayor Gorlick, for giving me the opportunity to speak. Um, I just wanted to say, can you guys hear me? We have had so much change this last year, a new city attorney, a new city manager, uh, and now we have our new mayor. And I really hope that as a group that we can get back together as a group of citizens demonstrating respect for one another and care for our community. The night in question, Ed Turner was taken aback and offended by some things that a woman was saying. He interrupted with an expletive. This was a visceral response to this woman's accusations. He then apologized to the council for the outburst. Given the apology, I felt we could move on. I was the mayor at that time, so I was, I was uh, running the meeting. So I wish to take the first step here. Perhaps I should have paid more attention to the outburst. Hindsight is always 2020. I am not a professional referee, although I did teach in a prison school. Perhaps I didn't manage that interchange very well. And for that, I sincerely apologize. So tonight, I'm asking all of you to forgive and to move forward. Let us bring our community together. Let us show respect for one another and give the benefit of the doubt to those who make mistakes. There are so many things that our current city council wants to accomplish. We are in a new year with a new mayor, with a new city attorney, with a new city manager. Our councils, our council members and staff are very capable professionals. We can leverage our experience and our expertise, but we still need all of you behind us. Give us the opportunity to focus on exploring solutions to real problems and implementing process improvements based on best practices and best known methods. So now let's focus on urgent issues to improve our community. Thank you so much, Mayor Lawler, for giving me the opportunity to say something. You're welcome. Council Member Lovelace, would you like to say anything? Uh, I have a process question. So I, I know this topic came up in closed session, uh, but I'm curious how it actually got into open session. <laughs> so, you know, so my understanding from the previous meeting was that you had to have a, a majority of the council bring a topic to the public discussion. 
So this was ended up on the agenda because uh, Council Member Luthold at last meeting uh, requested discussion of this item as a future agenda item. That's not a majority of the council bringing a closed session item forward, though. And, and this this was not a, a matter that was actually ever discussed in closed session. Although I did provide some analysis of this issue to the council via email. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I really appreciate me, former Mayor Turner's uh, statement. I think it is important for us to all move forward and uh, get on with the business of the city of Juan Serino. I also appreciate the former mayor Jeff Lucas's statement, and I welcome all the members of the Veterans Board here uh, speaking on behalf of uh, Steve. Uh, Steve has been a politician. He understands that when you feel strongly about something, you have to take a stand. So we voted. You know, we're the ones who were opposed to having him become the city manager, but that's part of the mandate that the city requires of us: that we walk with our conscience, we decide what we think is in the best interest of the city. At this point, Steve is here. I welcome them wholeheartedly. I will work with them, and I am looking forward to the best that we can all do together for the city of Montserrat. Thank you. Mayor <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Um, I think um, the reason that um, I requested that um, you bring this uh, issue forward is because it was a concern that was raised. Um, it was discussed that the council would do well to take this matter seriously um, and um, that we should make a, um, first of all, we should talk about it, um, and second of all, that we should uh, consider making a response. I think um, there has been change and we have learned from this issue that came up in, in a heated discussion over an important topic um, with the reach codes, I believe it was. Um, and it's kind of surprising that um, everyone uh, was as involved with that discussion um, as we would hope they were. And it's great to see, um, it was great at that meeting to have so many people who were speaking to the issue because they felt passionately about it. It's great to see the turnout here tonight. I think it's a great welcome for Steve. Uh, I'll save my comments on that for later. But uh, it's really nice to see everybody here. I hope that uh, this year um, we can take what we have learned last year as a young council um, and we're going to move the whole city's agenda forward. Okay, thank you. All right, it's, um, oh, I will open it now to public comment. I, 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 oh, sure. I, I just have one more question. Uh, we're agreeing to a season desist if you know, tomorrow one of us is rude to somebody. Does that violate the season desist, and what consequences does that uh, have on the city? Because now we have a season desist against ourselves that we voluntarily adopted. Um, in in short, um, a council member bringing a room to a member of the public uh, is not is not going to violate a unconditional commitment uh, that the council makes to. Uh, you know, avoid violations uh, based on prohibiting public criticism. That's that's certainly not going to be an issue. Um, you know, this sort of unconditional commitment, uh, you know, would only be violated basically if the council took actions that would, you know, prohibiting a speaker from, you know, their First Amendment rights to speak in public during the appropriate period of time. You know, every person gets a several minutes you know, during the open session uh, forum item. Um, every person gets a chance to speak during, you know, uh, a regular agenda item. Um, basically, the purpose of this is to signal to the public that the, the council is committed to, um, you know, respecting public criticism. Uh, I, I don't think that it's likely that there be any sort of um, liability that would incur to the city as a result of adopting this. Yeah, I, I just want to be clear that this may not reflect that from now on we are prevented from being <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I'll open it up to public comment. Uh, council recognizes Susanna Price. Hi there, my name is Susanna Craig and I live on Island Avenue. That woman that um, Council Member Turner um, Reference was me. 
um, I actually had an email uh, from various people of a statement that Councilmember Turner sent um, that was not even handed in any way. When I tried to approach Councilmember Turner, um, she basically turned around and told me that I was fake news. So, but that's aside. I didn't realize that a council member had written. Um, another email was sent to me with this agenda item. Um, I didn't realize that it could possibly be a Brown Act uh, Brown, uh, law violation. So I am evaluating with legal counsel of what step I want to take. And this is a statement that I'd like to say. Council member Turner has violated the Brown Act. She has done this multiple times. The Brown Act violation is just part of the issue that we have with this council. Council Member Turner has been um, part of the council for her second term. She should know better. The council in this particular case, by not reprimanding or censoring Council Member Turner, the entire city council is condoning and supporting her violations of the code of ethics. This council should take immediate action and Senator Councilmember Turner. That is my request. Thank you. Oh, and thank you so much for the bit. Um, oh, Mariam, I really love it. Thank you. All right, we'll bring it back to council for discussion. We have a, we talk about the, uh, we have a motion to approve the letter. We want to talk about the letter that, that we were, does anybody have any comments about the letter? That's the right to submit. Got it. You may go, yeah. Council Member Turner. Yeah, I wanted I wanted to um, present to the council some changes that I'd like to make to the to the letter that I had spoken with council about. And the first one had to say that the city council of the city of Montesarino denies all the allegations to the extent that your correspondence is intended to be a request to cease and desist in order to avoid unnecessary litigation and without admitting any violation of the Brown Act. City Council of the City of Montesorino hereby unconditionally commits that it will cease and desist and will not engage in the challenge action as described above. That is the that is the uh, modification that I sent to uh, Attorney. So, yeah, for the council's benefit, the language that. Uh, uh, Councilmember Turner is suggesting would be to change the uh, third paragraph of the letter. Uh, it would be to add a sentence at the beginning. I'd love to put this on the board, but unfortunately we don't have our computer in front of us today that connects to that. Um, it would be to add, the City Council of the City Monastery denies all the allegations. To that third paragraph is the first sentence. And then to the last sentence, uh, instead of uh, ending and not repeat, the challenge uh, past action as described above, it would read, uh, and not engaged in the challenged action as described above. So those are the minor modifications there. All right. Do we have any comments? Councilmember Yeah, I, I, I don't have any problem with those changes. I, I, I thought, and since the former mayor turned her, formally apologized, if you could add a paragraph in there. Personally apologized for what uh, uh, it's, it's some some language. Uh, you, you can well, I, I need yeah. to I, you need to be very clear as to what I apologize for, right? Yeah, that's, that's why you I, I apologize for uh, for not having taken not being a professional referee, and that maybe I didn't manage the interchange well. That there was no Brown Act violation. I'd like to say that I, I approve of the letter with these these changes and I make a motion to approve the letter. To approve the letter is as, with the as amendments with the amendment. uh, described by uh, Councilman Council Member Turner. Turner. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Including the apology. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we need to actually specify what that language is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and that there's already a motion on the floor. I think, I think the apology is just, just it's, in the, it's in the public document. Does it have any legal bearing? Um, I don't anticipate that it would have any legal bearing. The form of the letter is actually prescribed by the by the government code, and basically, when the city adopts an unconditional commitment, it's supposed to be in substantially similar form to the letter to the form that's prescribed by the government code. So, to the extent that we can leave our modifications to the minimal desired by council, probably best. So I do have a, a motion um, by Mayor Lawler and a second by Councilmember Member Lupe. You should be able to vote. One abstention. It's council member line. All right, on to committee and commission reports. Does anybody have anything to report? No, I think we know the last one. Yep. No, the meeting's over. On to council member comments. Council members. Okay, like to begin? Uh, yes, I just wanted to to add uh, that the last time we met and you we weren't here, uh, we had a meeting in which um, Terry left. And one of the things that I requested from him is to agendize the auditor to come on board and speak to the council. And also um, the um, the Clear God project and also Jack Lucas's website. Those are the three things that I asked for. Yeah, um, I wanted to uh, take this opportunity to extend my uh, formal welcome to uh, Stephen and Artis uh, as the manager. Um, I know you have experience from our side of the table, and I know that's going to help you understand the challenges that we face as a council. Um, that said, you have the unenviable position of having to walk the fine line of providing excellent service to the citizens of Monte Serino, creating a great and supportive working environment for the city staff, and to do that while answering to five different bosses here. That's on the city council. I see Monte Serino facing several key challenges this year. This isn't an exhaustive list, but uh, we need to begin by making sure that we ensure the right choices are made for hiring and retaining staff. We need to address the moving targets of the pension funding that uh, has been changed on us and figure out what's going on with that and what may happen in the future. We need to budget for the proper level of city services without letting costs spiral out of control. We need to prepare to address the challenges that the state keeps creating regarding housing density. And we need to continue to address fire and earthquake safety concerns. I think while doing this, you're going to have to show some great diplomacy and some caution in your communications to avoid the missteps which could embroil Monte Serino in further litigation. We've been through that with former mayors and city managers more than 10 years ago. We're still dealing with the fi uh, financial repercussions of that. So I think one of your key missions um, and challenges is to be to make sure nothing like that happens on your watch here. Um, as you well know, you were an unconventional and a controversial choice for this, this position. The majority of this council advocated hard for you, and they put their faith in you. And ultimately, this whole council is extremely invested in your success. So let's work together. Let's take advantage of your experience and your connections. Let's leverage the great staff that we have here at the city. Let's build a quality operation to serve the city, uh, constituents of Monte Serena. So I look forward to working with you this year to keep Monte Serena on a stable and sustainable track going forward. Uh, I made some initial comments, but uh, we do have a celebrity city manager now. <laughs> 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 it was 
photograph. Same photograph. It's the newest photograph in the center of our street. So I hope you don't need to get your head there. It's a good picture, though. It's a good picture. And finally, I'd like to welcome our new city manager, Steve Leonardis. I am also with his enthusiasm and attention to detail, and I look forward to working with him to accomplish many good things for Monastrino and our residents. I'd also like to thank our former mayor for her hard work and leadership this past year, and I'd like to thank my respected fellow council members for selecting me as the new mayor. I am honored to serve our community and sit on this council with them. We may not always agree, but I believe in this council for we all bring unique perspectives and want what is best for our residents. I look forward to working with them, our city manager, city staff, and city attorney in tackling important issues, building operational excellence, and providing top services to our residents. And with that, we'll move on to the city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor Lawler. So I do not have an official report this evening, but I would just like to say thank you to the community of Monte Serena for the warm welcome. I felt welcome all week with visitors stopping by at the office delivering boxes of candy for staff and welcoming me in person, as well as the council's comments this evening. Thank you very much. I feel very welcome coming on board, as well as the members of the public who chose to come in this evening and say some nice things. I'm looking forward to also a very good year of the council, the staff, and the city manager working together in harmony to serve the good people of Monte Serena. As was stated by a couple different council members, there are a lot of items that could be coming forward on the agenda, a lot of, a lot of challenges, and we will be working together to resolve those and to maintain and improve the quality of life for the people in Monte Serena. And I have a, another announcement to make this evening. There was a friend of our community a little over a week ago. They passed away. Her name was Rosemary Phillips Pierce. Rosemary was a Monte, she became a Montessorino resident in the 1960s after working in Washington, D.C. in the Pentagon. Fascinating story. She began working for the city of Montessorino, doing whatever was needed to be done. She kind of came in as office help. She had such a strong work ethic that she essentially rose to the level of city manager, a position that I am in now. <laughs> it's kind of ironic that she had passed in, in the last week and I was hired for this position. She held the position of city manager from 1986 through 1993 until she retired in 93. That was a year before our clerk, Ms. Chalamengos. <laughs> this is our longest tenured employee. During her tenure with the city of Montessorino, Rosemary was instrumental in moving the city hall operations from the building next door, which was our old post office, most recently remembered by most of us, to this facility, which used to be the Red Cross facility. And at the time, that was a big deal for that to occur. And Jack Lucas, who was here earlier, former mayor, had the opportunity to work with Rosemary Phillips Pierce. One of Rosemary's daughters came into city hall this week, and they brought us a copy of Thomas Inglis's book, The Battle for the Peaceful Mountain. This was written in 1982. It's a memento that she had saved all these years. And for those of you who don't know, Admiral Thomas Inglis was the founder of the city of Monte Serena. And this starts at day one from the very beginning when uh, they decided why Monte Serena should not become part of Los Gatos. <laughs> and then, it's from today, although we are great neighbors and we share a lot of resources. Um, but it's, it's a very fascinating write. He completed this in 1982, and it is, you know, I was glad when Rosemary's daughter came and dropped this off. I'm going to make it my mission to scan this and make it available to the public online so they can read it. It's quite thick. And at this time, I'd like us all to. Remember, you know, our thoughts are with the entire Pierce family. I'd like to remember Rosemary uh, Phillips Pierce. For her obituary is published in the Mercury News, and I put some copies of it on the table to my right over by the agenda packages. So if you'd like to pick one of those up on the way out. <coughs> and that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to future agenda items. Mm, so close. Uh, you mentioned the old building. That's one of our items that we need to attend.
tend to. It's been empty for the last few years since the post office moved out and we've not used it. So it'd be great to see some use for it. If you can figure out what would be the best use so we can mm. make that available, whatever is appropriate. But we do need to get that done this year, I think. Mm -hmm. That's been going on for about two or three years. And it's a highly priced location. I know at one time the fire department was somebody who was going to be looking at it, but I told them that. But they're, they're, that's one item I have to see in the pictures. Uh, the other item was a request I made to our council regarding a memo on the whether we could pass an ordinance requiring pg &E to cut the trees that are next to the wire and that can cause fires or not. So hopefully uh, we, we can address that issue because we do have, ordin we do have ordinances where uh, weed ordinances and other ordin similar ordinances that require uh, fire safety. So I really would like to see an ordinance that since pg and &E doesn't seem to uh, get around cutting trees, maybe we can cut it, cut it for them and then send them a bill for it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd like to see that done. Um, the third item I think maybe time to investigate is whether we have any kind of Airbnb ordinance, what kind of ordinance we need. And I don't feel one way or the other on it, but BNB uh, is a thing to do and some cities ban it totally. Some, some cities have some guidelines and regulations and want to see it needs to adopt something so people know whether they can do it or not do it. Steve, did you have a response? Yes, thank you, Mayor Lawler. Um, in reference to Mr. Uh, Councilmember Elliott's uh, comments regarding the building and store, I was going to send out something in the memo this week to the council. Um, there is an agency that I worked with in my previous jurisdiction. I will be meeting with representatives of that agency, and they um, are in the business of forming a public-private partnership to rehabilitate underutilized city buildings and bring them into use for the community. So I will be sending out a memo and I will be meeting with that um, individual on Friday in the office. And um, also in my previous jurisdiction, um, we did pass an Airbnb ordinance. So that's a great idea to bring forward. And when it comes to the trees, um, we will find out what we can do about that. So thank you. Yeah, um, one of the issues we have the uh, ad hoc committee to deal with, Council Member Lagrave and myself, um, to take a look at objective standards uh, to figure out what the city can and should be doing related to objective standards that can be um, overlaid on the building code to potentially keep growth uh, in the spirit of Monte Cerino as we go forward. Um, the ad hoc committee will be starting to move on that. We want to work closely with uh, city manager, city planner, and city attorney on this to determine what the options are for objective standards, and then ultimately what position Monte Serena is going to take on objective standards. Are we going to push the envelope uh, on the law uh, as, we as we adopt our objective standards? Are we going to take a middle ground, or are we going to go to the opposite extreme of letting the state essentially take what it wants with no additional input from Monte Serena? So we're going to be looking very closely at that. Um, this is something I've been pushing for a year. We couldn't get traction on it before. Um, Councilman de La Bouvet took the lead to put together the ad hoc committee, so we are planning to make this happen. We do need to move as quickly as we can before the next round of housing bills come down from the state and tell us that we can't have our own standards. So um, that's going to be uh, a major issue and hopefully you can help bring some expertise to that. Uh, and also the city planner as well. Um, so uh, that's going to be kind of my um, signature issue. I hope this year we're working with council member. Yeah. 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 We never got the, um, the code for the EV charging station, so I don't think anybody here can use that EV charging station still. <laughs> uh, the other one is uh, the clear go implementation. We need to finish that and, and uh, change some of the things on the website to make it more visible and to put in some data on unemployee salaries so we're not in this situation, how much does the city manager really make? Uh, 
in terms of a salary versus versus benefits. And then the third one I wanted to, to um, add was uh, changes to the ad hoc committee that we can talk about next week. Uh, may not be able to fulfill some of the things. But I also wanted to see if we could make some changes to some of the assignments. Councilmember Lovelace. Uh, I'm, I'm good. All right. I'll save my minutes for next week. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Well then, at this point, we will adjourn the meeting of the City city of Montserino City Council in memory of Rosemary Pierce, longtime resident, former employee, and former city manager of the City of Montserino. <laughs>